Back in the locker room with Clinton Wolf and we're at the Peterson Event Center and joining us, uh, Pitt's very own Renaissance man, uh, Levon. Uh, Levon, do you, do you, you're definitely a very interesting young man. Do you, do you like when people call you that or is, do you just kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's not bad press, I guess. I mean, it's who I am. It's not uh, not something I shy away from. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't feel uh, too much like a renaissance man, but I know I'm uh, pretty different than my teammates. Uh, if the media wants to go with it, that's fine with Maybe me. Maybe a little eccentric. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it depends who you ask. I mean, if you put me in Canada, I'm not too eccentric, but maybe out here I'm a little bit different than uh, the people I'm playing with. So. Now, you are from the great white north. Now, I'm from Buffalo, so I used to spend a lot of time over at St. Catharines. Had some buddies. Now, that's where I first learned about a toque. You got a toque? His I hair's shaped toques, like a toque. Yeah, yeah you got to have a toque. Yeah, it's, it took me a while to get used to not saying toque around there. No one knew what I was talking about. I had to get eh? the wool hat and all that, you know. It's small adjustments. So, yeah. tell us about the hair. Uh, you know, it was actually uh, kind of a dare when I was in Slovenia with the national team this summer. One of the guys, uh, you know, something I had in my head for a while, and one of my teammates didn't think that I'd do it. And I said, well, you know, if you pay for the haircut, I'll go do it. So, uh, you know, I got it in the summer, and uh, I sort of liked it, thought it was something different, and I uh, figured I'd bring it back for some, uh, some of the Big East stuff. Now, you are different in a way. You like cliff diving, uh, white water rafting. I mean, that's not the normal thing you associate basketball guys with. What do you cliff dive at? Yeah. Uh, back home in Vancouver, in yeah. the you know, North Shore in the mountains, there's a bunch of spots you can do that, lakes and stuff uh -huh. like that. And, uh, you know, like I said, that's pretty commonplace in uh, Vancouver. All my friends do that. It's, you know, pretty normal, but uh, I guess there's not a lot of that. Right. Here, now, so. when was the first time you took the big plunge? You decided, you know what, I'm going up on some big old rock somewhere and I'm just going to own now, off the Now, Swannies edge. or Gainers or one and a half? Uh, I mean, did you do crazy? The nothing, nothing too crazy. My mom uh, <laughs> tries to keep me from doing too many <laughs> head-first things, uh, mostly feet-first, but I dive off some of it. And uh, as far as I can remember, I think probably uh, you know getting ca hassled by my cousins or something when I was ten or eleven to mm -hmm. jump off some rock was probably the first time I uh, did anything like that. What's the highest? And I went thirty-five feet. Sixty is the highest. I've wow. Ever. That was pretty oh, intense. That would be. You intense. didn't dive six. You didn't dive six. No, that I didn't was dive a jump. sixty. It was, yeah. it was a jump. I like jumping off high. You know, I've, I've yeah, gone fifty. Rough. 50. That yes, would be, yes. yeah, that one would curl your hair. Now, are you the first one that goes, or are you the second one? You got to see somebody else do it first. Uh, you know, this time I was actually the first the first one. My friends were a little shocked, but I sort of uh -huh. climbed up there and jumped off some stump over a tree and, you know, into the canyon and landed in the river. And, uh, you know, they had to follow, of course, because I was the first one to step <laughs> up and do it. But Now, do you do any rock climbing? Uh, I have a little bit, nothing, yeah. uh, nothing serious. Most of the indoor stuff we do that with my, uh, you know, my gym class. And oh, stuff you like must that. blow away the rock climbing walls at six ten. Yeah, it helps. I can yeah. uh, got a pretty good reach. How about that white water raft? Now we we've enjoyed white water uh, over the years. Have you done any around the area here? Uh, no, I haven't actually. I haven't got a chance to go out, and uh, you know, it'll be something I've heard some. There's some nice places around here, and uh, you know, it's something I, I don't do it too much, but. Uh, you know, maybe maybe one of these days, get enough time in the spring or something, go and do it. We've we'll got to put them on our list. Right, yeah. yeah we, we'll we, do, we, we just did the high ropes uh, course up at League and Air, and we did yeah. some, uh, we did the uh, vomit comet and the uh, zip line. <laughs> That's all we, uh, all Sounds we appealing, from rock climbing. Yeah. We, we have a lot of fun. There's nothing it. funnier than watching a fat guy step off a platform right. on a zip line and <laughs> scream all the way across the valley. Talk about your experience this summer over in uh, playing hoops over in Europe. What was that like? Uh, it was huge. Yeah. Uh, I got a chance to uh, you know kind of play at that next level, play against a, you know, a bunch of NBA guys, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, Rosslyn Mistarevic, uh, you know, against the various countries, and uh, it was huge just to be able to step up and move from the from the junior ranks and be playing with the senior team, and uh, just have that experience. It's a, just a whole different level, just the professionalism and. Uh, you know the level of play and really see how you match up against guys that are uh, you know been successful in the NBA and uh, in professional overseas as well. How was the culture? Was it a, a shock to you or the food? Can a lot I, come on, you know or? you meant the food. Well, yeah, I mean, food, you know, I'm always interested culture. in food. You might, I am yeah, it's, heavy, it's you know? great. I mean, I've had the uh, had a pretty unique opportunity to be able to travel with with basketball and you know going to South America or over to Europe, and uh, it's always nice. I mean, I, I grew up in a pretty diverse uh, you know culture. Anyways, there's lots of different cultures around me, so it's nice to be. Able to go, you know, places being in the Alps and Italy is pretty amazing and experience that whole. Uh, Can you, you know, jump that whole higher culture. in the thin air? 
Uh, I don't know. It's harder <laughs> to run. I'll tell you that much. You're at about 5,000 feet, so it gets a little tough playing oh. games. But uh, you know, just seeing all that is really neat. It's pretty unique, and uh, you know, not a lot of people get that chance to travel for free uh, playing basketball. Did you do? Did you get to do some pretty cool sightseeing, or lining up, being that you're kind of an adventure guy? What would do, did you do anything out there that was uh, kind of edgy? Uh, not really. That's the tough thing. I mean, you're traveling with the team, and really, you're there to play basketball. So the uh, you know the sightseeing vacation part is usually secondary. But you know, you get a chance to walk around and at least see a bit of the uh, culture and whatever's close to your hotel, at least. <laughs> now, Ken, uh, I'll leave on. How did uh, your teammates go about naming you the cleaner? Uh, I'm not sure. That's one that's new to me. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we got that from uh, from Greg, and he said that they, they were calling you the cleaner. Cleaning the cleaner. up the mess. Cleaning up the like mess. The at, mafia guys. At, uh, no, I don't think <laughs> not that kind of mess. I think uh, it kind of makes sense. I guess you know this guy does a uh, guy does a bit of everything, uh, keeps everybody in check, and uh, you know makes sure everything's running smoothly. Now your buddy Aaron Gray hurt his wrist dunking in the shoot around is that true that's like, you yeah. must have been busting his chops about that yeah not, not too bad actually i don't think the words uh the words spread quite yet we're not really sure uh what's going to happen with that and uh you know it happens when I mean, we get excited in warm-ups and shoot around especially these big games uh, uh -huh. you know a couple hours before everybody's pretty amped up and you know start doing some crazy things but that happens nah, i've hurt my wrist many times dunking <laughs> so you hurt your, you blew out your back tying your shoes before a game <laughs> Of uh, what to, to this team this year? There, I mean, is it the success that seems to? Is it the success you guys have had that has made this team very close, or is it this? Is it because this team seems very close that you guys have had uh, the success for this point? Uh, I think it's a combination. I think we, uh, you know, really could see that right away at the end of the last year. I think we've had guys that have been around. Uh, for a while, and we had you know the young guys coming in last year. We really were able to gel, and uh, I think it's carried over. I mean, you could see throughout the summer workouts and in the in the spring after the season was over, guys were you know really keen. We really knew we could do something special, so the guys were always in the gym. You know, always got along really well. So we've we've had a lot of time, uh, you know, just playing pickup and you know messing around in the gym, which uh, you know wasn't so much the case in the past. So I think that's really helped for us to uh, you know get to know each other and be able to gel. You know. Uh, as the seasons come along. Can you guys really adapt to any game that your opponent throws at you? I mean, is this team got that many parts that it can work and if they take one area away, you guys can, you know, like Georgetown, I was talking with uh, your coach, Jamie, you know, Georgetown, it's a high scoring game. Then uh, UConn, it's a low scoring game. You guys can play both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's our versatility is one of our biggest strengths. I mean, we have a lot of guys that can contribute and then we have a lot of different weapons. I mean, we can we can execute in the half court, and then we also have enough guys that are, uh, you know, quick enough, flash enough that we can get out and run if it, if the game's uh, a little bit more up tempo. And uh, you know, just having that adaptability and the depth really uh, really serves an advantage. You know, Levi, every, every week uh, we give out a locker room leader award, and it's uh, to leadership. And because of not only are you leader on the court, but your selfless play is the cleaner and your support for your teammates and the fact that you're an academic All-American, a, a leader on campus as well, we'd like to award with you this way from Chrysler Dodge Jeep. And uh, congratulations. We just uh, appreciate you. We're big fans of yours here in the locker room. Great. Thank you very much. And, you know, the fact that you're a cliff diver really helped That's put right. you over I mean, the top. That, that, yeah. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, right? All right. Uh, good luck uh, this week. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to close out the show right here in the locker room.